Hello everyone, uh, this is Hank. Today I'm going to talk about EOS RP Scene Intelligent Mode or better known as the Full Automatic Mode. Okay, um, I kind of wanted to go back to basics and help, you know, those of you who just got EOS RP and you don't know much about camera. Uh, so, um, with that in mind, Okay, we're going to talk about the full automatic mode. So wherever you are in the mode dial, you dial it down to the A plus mode, which is a scene intelligent auto mode. And I will explain that in a little bit and how to best use it. Okay. So first of all, when you uh, get into this mode, the first thing you do is like you press the shutter button halfway to focus. And then you press it fully to take a picture. So that's basically full auto and you don't really need to think much about it. Now there's not that much uh, in, in ways of control and I will show you how. Um, it actually more control than you think. Okay, so first of all you can of course change the, um, the speed mode. Okay, uh, I'll leave it at single shooting for now. Okay, and then the next control would be whether you want to shoot in JPEG, RAW, both, or just RAW, right? So that's your choice. Right now I have it set on on large format JPEG. Okay, and the third one is you can either enable the touch shutter to take a picture from touching the screen or not. Okay, uh, that's up to you. So those are the three basic controls that you have. Now actually... I will show you a lot more controls than that, but that is basically on the surface. That's all you have. So you basically just shoot away. Now the reason that they call this a scene intelligent mode instead of full automatic mode is as you can see the symbol up here, there's a person. It looks at the scene, right? In this case I have a picture of a person. So it, it's basically say that okay, so you want to take a portrait, so it switch over to portrait mode automatically. Okay? So so that's what it does. If you have like a scenery, unfortunately I don't have to show you, it'll switch over uh, to a scenery mode. Okay, so it's actually more intelligent than than a full auto that's just blindly taking it based strictly just on the um, the light. Okay, and this thing does more than just look at the light. You look at the light, of course, at just the light exposure, but it also look at the scene and gives you different modes. All right. So now, of course, it doesn't stop there. It lets you do more than that, and I'll show you that uh, now. You see the symbol here. The color of symbol. You press on that, it gives you a preset and a whole bunch of other choices, and we'll go through all of that quickly, okay? Okay, so in the preset, okay, um, now it let you do like three user, um, you know, specified preset, and I, I will talk more about that later, but first, okay, you can go vivid, and as you can see, it changed the color. So you can affect the way your picture looks. And remember, all of this is going to be uh, valid only if you shoot JPEG. When you shoot RAW, none of this is going to apply. So that's why you always want to, to uh, shoot in JPEG if you want to take advantage of these. If you take RAW, then it's up to you to post-process. And we all know that. Okay, so you can have a choice even black and white, okay, of choosing your picture. So your picture doesn't have to be fully automatic in the strict sense of the word, okay. So that is the first one. Press this. Now you can change the background blur, okay. The default is auto, so it's going to look at the scene and says, okay, you're taking portrait, I'm going to blur the background for you. You're taking a a landscape, I'm going to make everything clear. If you don't trust the, the camera, then you can tell it. You can tell it to blur it a lot, blur it less, okay, or you can sharpen. So you go all the way back and forth. Okay? Or you can switch it back to auto, which is the default. So you can do that. 
You can also change the brightness of the picture. If, if you think it's too dark, you make it bright. You think it's too bright, you make it darker. So you have quite a bit of control right there. Right? Okay. You can go to contrast. You can make it more contrasty or less. Okay. Or you can make it more colorful by increasing the saturation. Pardon. Or less. Okay. Or you can change the color tone. So there's two ways to change the color tone one and two. So color tone one, you can make it bluer or you can make it more warm. Okay, for any kind of picture of you you want to, you can do that. Okay, or you can do color two, tone two, which is more magenta okay, or more green. So you, you do have a, a bit of control in full automatic mode. Okay, and of course you can do monochrome. Monochrome is another word for black and white, but it's actually not quite black and white. You can do pure black and white, or you can do like a one color tone, right? Sepia, blue tone, purple, green. So, so you basically have a, a color, one color choice. Okay, so for example, uh, you go in here and, and you always shoot, I, I'm just giving you an example. You always shoot black and white, for example, right? Of course, you can go there, or you can, you can, okay, go here and choose it as a preset. Go all the Sorry, way here. I didn't understand. Okay, so you do a preset, all right, and you press the info button. Then it'll, it'll ask you, Register current setting, and you said okay. okay. As you can notice that it changed to a user two. So whenever you choose user two, and then uh, and then you can, okay, for example, you get out here and you do a reset, right? So now you're going back to a normal mode. Now if you want black and white, just go into preset and choose two, and automatically switch over to the black and white because it remembers that. You can do up to three, as I mentioned before. Okay, um, so basically, and if you change your mind, just press the star button, reset it, and then you go back to automatic. And um, so that's basically the full automatic mode. You can actually do a lot of custom stuff with it. Now, in the menu, there's a couple of things that that you may need to know. Okay. Um, Okay, here the, the 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 most important one is that you retain creative assist data or not. So basically, if you if you are setting it right, and uh, if you turn it off, then it won't remember the last set data. Now, if you can turn this on, and then it will remember. Okay, the default is that it's off. Okay. Um, Another one that's important or not is the auto servo. Automatically is enabled, and what that means is like, like, like say if if you're taking picture of your kids, your kids are moving, the camera smart enough by default is going to switch over to auto servo mode to to help you. Okay, so now if you don't like that, you can turn it off, but automatically it'll switch for you. So it's, it's fairly intelligent. And that, those are the only two that you kind of really need to know. Other than that, that is um, um, scene intelligent mode, or I call it full auto mode, in a nutshell. Thank you very much.